What can I say? Dining out with food allergies, it can feel so risky sometimes. But with the right research and questions, it can decrease that risk and make it doable and maybe even fun too. In this episode, I'm sharing what I don't expect restaurants to do and three things that I do expect them to do before we ever sit down and order. If you're wondering if you can dine out safely or you already dine out with food allergies, but you're curious if you want the same things, this episode is for you. Let's get to it. Hey, food allergy mama. If you're here, you've likely experienced the scary and lonely food allergy diagnosis with your child. Unfortunately, food allergy parents aren't taught how to navigate the food allergy lifestyle, and it's easy to feel alone and discouraged sometimes. But I'm here to show you that food allergy life it doesn't have to feel restrictive, scary, or isolated. I'm Karina, and I'm a 17-year food allergy mom and food allergy coach at Friendly Pantry Consulting. I specialize in making food allergy life safer and less worrisome for food allergy families like yours. I'm not perfect, but over 17 years, I've learned a lot the hard way, and I'm sharing the secrets and resources you won't hear anywhere else that will help you feel confident living with food allergies faster and easier than I did. From introducing allergens, travel, navigating school, and educating friends and family, this podcast will give you the essential tips and strategies you need to help your food allergy child and family thrive. Welcome to the show. Okay, full disclosure here, it has not always been a rosy experience when we've been dining out with food allergies. There have been times when we've researched restaurants online but still decided to leave once we got there and we had one particularly bad experience at a restaurant and I actually want to devote a whole episode to that story. I'm planning to share that in episode 15. So if you're listening to this episode when it's released, that episode won't be out for a few weeks, but definitely watch for that. But I want to say something here because I know that it doesn't seem ideal to leave a restaurant or let's say not even going in because of what they say at the door. But I think as food allergy families, we shouldn't look at that as a failure, but instead it's a sign of confidence and knowledge of what's safe for our family. Because if that restaurant does not answer your questions or seems like they don't know what they're doing, leaving is the best thing you can do for your safety. So I believe in normalizing doing what is safest and I hope to give you full confidence in knowing what's important in the workshops and the things that I teach. And that includes the Dining Out with Food Allergies workshop. This is the workshop where I take you by the hand and show you the steps to figure out which restaurants are worth trying and which restaurants are not. It will help you to decide if you need to leave before even ordering. So if you're looking for that allergy-friendly restaurant to meet with friends or celebrate every once in a while, go to the link in the show notes for the Dining Out with Food Allergies workshop. It only takes about an hour to increase your confidence with dining out. Okay, so let's start with the one thing I do not expect restaurants to do. And that is that I do not expect them to guarantee their food is allergen free. Now, just hearing this alone sounds dangerous, right? And I mean, we've all seen the menu disclaimers at restaurants. And honestly, if a restaurant has a disclaimer that says, we cannot guarantee allergens are not present in our food and nothing else, I'm instantly turned off. So much so that we may leave the restaurant. Not only that, but I feel like this disclaimer violates one of my other expectations, which I'll get to in a bit. But on the other hand, if a restaurant disclaimer says, we have allergen policies in place and we take care to provide training for our staff about food allergy procedures, but we are not able to guarantee allergens will not be in the food, that is a whole different story, right? Now they're talking about what they do to keep people with food allergies safer, even though they still recognize that being in a busy restaurant might mean an allergen is in a food when they don't intend it to be. To me, this is just one indicator out of several that they take food allergies seriously. And we'll get to more of those other indicators, but this is a great start. So now that I've talked about what I don't expect from restaurants, I want to talk about the three deal breakers I have before we will eat there with food allergies. Okay, so number one thing is thorough training of all staff about food allergy safety. And when I talk about training, I mean that I want everybody at the restaurant to be trained in their own appropriate way. This means everyone from the host or the hostess to the busing staff to the line cooks and the chefs and so on. Now I get that maybe a host or hostess doesn't need to know the details that a chef or cook needs to know, 
But I still expect that if I ask that hostess about whether the restaurant can accommodate food allergies, they can either give me an answer that is truthful and accurate and makes sense, or they realize that this is an important question and they need to get a chef or manager to talk to me. And then, of course, the training should go further for the wait staff. For example, once we're seated, I like to ask the wait staff if there are any dishes that we need to specifically avoid giving our aller- given our allergies. This opens the conversation and allows me to see how they respond. I love it when they say, let me check with the chef. Ideally, I don't want them to be guessing what will work. I want them to alert the chef and check with them. And they should be trained to do this without doubt. The last thing I want is for wait staff to be fumbling and saying things that they think I want to hear because they aren't properly trained. Okay, the second thing that I want all restaurants to have before we dine out with food allergies is good food allergy policies and procedures that are followed. Finding out whether the restaurant has a good food allergy policy can seem difficult because we aren't able to fully see what goes on behind the scenes. Even so, I feel like we can get a good feeling whether there are good policies and procedures from the little clues that the restaurant leaves. For example, what does the website say about food allergies? If it doesn't say anything, that could be a red flag. When you call, how do they answer your questions? And as an aside, I want to encourage you to call restaurants and ask questions. Even if they don't answer in a way that makes you comfortable with dining there, calling and asking questions shows them that food allergies are an issue. The more of us that do it, the more restaurants will start to see how important it is. When they see that it's important, they will be more inclined to take action on it. Not only does calling restaurants increase food allergy awareness, but it can give you a unique window into what that restaurant's policies are. So ask lots of questions and watch for the clues. The third deal breaker for dining out with food allergies at restaurants is for them to take 100% care and attention. Now, what does it mean for a restaurant to take care and attention? When dining out, I expect that they show and act like the allergy is important to them. Now, this can be shown in lots of ways, but one example I've seen is that the manager is notified when there's a food allergy and they come to the table. I like this because I feel like the wait staff can sometimes be bogged down with just all of the t- all of their table's needs from getting water to getting new cutlery to delivering the food, taking the orders, all of that. Usually, not always, the manager has likely been working at the restaurant longer and maybe it's a they're a bit more, let's say, mature and responsible and hopefully able to fully dedicate a little more time to really take care and attention with that food allergy order. Another sign of care and attention to me is stating that the meal is an allergy meal and also which allergens the meal is avoiding when they deliver the dish. For example, I love it when they say this is a peanut-free, tree nut-free, and gluten-free dish as they're putting it in front of my daughter. Because instantly that takes a lot of the stress away. Because first of all, it's showing that they avoided the correct allergens. They're not saying it's a dairy-free and egg-free dish. They're saying the right allergens. And they're also not missing any because it's so important with multiple allergies that they don't miss an allergen. If they say the wrong allergens, obviously it's an instant red flag. Or if they don't say any allergens, they just say this is the allergen meal, it can be a little bit more nerve wracking because you wanna make sure that they actually avoided the right allergens. Also making those those statements when they deliver it shows that they thought about the allergy meal when they picked it up and that they chose the right meal and not another meal by mistake. Now, of course, there can still be mistakes in there, but it just really helps to know that they made that conscious decision and saw that right meal and chose that meal. There are other signs of care and attention too, but I hope that these examples give you a good idea of what I mean by 100% care and attention. So those are the expectations I have of restaurants, but I want to stress that those expectations do, do not dissolve our due diligence. This is so important. Even if we are at the most allergy-friendly restaurant we know and we love them and we've been there many times, we cannot let our guard down. We need to ask the questions and check the meals once they arrive. We need to make sure that we are doing what we need to do to keep as safe as possible. I want you to know we have found some amazing restaurants both at home and abroad that are doing a great job with food allergies. So it is possible to dine out safely, but you can't just pick any restaurant out of thin air. It takes research and as I mentioned, due diligence. But in the end, if you're able 
to even find one or two restaurants that you can go to in a pinch, it's helpful and worth the effort you need to take to vet the restaurant. That's why I created my Dining Out with Food Allergies workshop. Not only do you get our best tips and strategies for dining out as safely as possible, but you also get a workbook that's going to take you through the process of vetting a restaurant. I'm going to take you by the hand, walk you through some of the important considerations and ways to figure out if a restaurant is allergy friendly or not. I want to help make it as safe as possible for you and your family and you'll love how this workshop helps with that in an hour or less. And P.S. little side note, you can get the Dining Out with Food Allergies workshop for 50% off if you buy it at the same time as you purchase the Food Allergy Travel Workshop. All you have to do is sign up for the Food Allergy Travel Workshop and then choose to get the Dining Out with Food Allergy Workshop as an upgrade at 50% off. Definitely a steal, especially if you're planning a trip now or anytime in the future. I'm going to put the link to that in the show notes. Thanks for listening and bye for now. Before you go, Mama, if you love this episode and want deeper support, head over to FriendlyPantry.com to see how we can partner together to keep your food allergy child safer and worry less. There's no need for wasting time searching all over Instagram, TikTok, and the web to get the practical knowledge you need for your family. While you're there, grab your free Food Allergy Kids Empowerment Guide or the newly diagnosed checklist today. Topics are not medical advice and are the opinions, views, and property of Friendly Pantry Consulting Incorporated. All rights reserved. Always contact your board-certified allergist immunologist for health advice.